Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com uh, weekend update. It is Saturday, it is uh, 8 a.m. Uh, I've been up since like 5.30, already went to the gym, went to the sauna, walked my dog, had breakfast on my cup of coffee, decaf, half-calf, um, and I'm ready for the day. And, and I, I think the message is, as we get older, you don't appreciate this when you're in your teens, or your 20s, or even sometimes your 30s, but it's the time of the day that you actually have to do things that are productive in your life. It could be just as simple as taking a walk with your dog, uh, you know, taking your kids somewhere, spending time with your loved one and friends, but make, you know, make the time that you are on earth awake, breathing and healthy count. And I think that's the most important part is as I get older, I, I can't ever see myself like sleeping in eight, nine, ten o'clock. It's just life is too short, and I think uh, it's an incredible gift that we get to wake up every morning. So might as well uh, make the most of it. Uh, other than that, guys, if you are brand new to the channel, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, if you could take a second and be so kind to just like, uh, share, subscribe, come along, right? Come along in this journey of on biased technical analysis and for all you guys who uh joined us uh this week right celebrating it's be 25 years for me uh in this wonderful uh reality show that's not on television the trading world uh next couple of weeks we've been kind of celebrating uh my 25th uh up and coming anniversary in a couple of weeks so for all you guys who came along uh this week uh you got pretty much to see everything right you got to see uh, the bounces, the rejections, the natural pivots, long, shorts, and so forth and so on. And it's a very, very cool, unique way of looking at the market. Uh, it's not the quote-unquote normal way to look at the market. The PS60 theory uh, was designed for channels to be, um, to be played within those channels and outside those channels on expansion, uh, on expansion days, both long and shorts. For you guys, uh, who are interested to take advantage? You have a couple of days left. I think I think Kenyon is running it through uh, through President's Day weekend, which is this weekend. I think through Monday. So if you want to come aboard, guys, uh, you have till Monday to kind of take advantage uh, of this special. Um, so let's talk about it, right. So the market has been uh, absolutely stellar, right? Absolutely on fire uh, since 2023. Uh, this is probably is equal to the internet craze um, as you can possibly get. Um, you know, the, the, the moves, uh, the aggressive moves in real stocks. Again, if you go, if you guys remember going, oh, some of you guys do, some of you guys don't. Uh, but, you know, going back to the internet craze in 99 and 2000, yeah, if you had your, you know, a lot of, you know, crazy random stocks, e-toys and, you know, SDLI and JDS Uniphase and Sun Microsystem at that time and, Nortel networks and PDLI, like all these weird symbols. And of course you had the internet stocks popping, but the difference, the major big difference between this potential craziness versus uh, what we saw uh, during then, it's this is happening with real companies. You know, this is panic buying with companies that have been around for a while that have billions and billions and approaching trillions of dollars of uh, market cap. So this is a very, very special market. Uh, it's unique in that fashion. Um, and you've seen now in the last five weeks that fund managers are playing catch up you know they're they're playing catch up because of these extraordinary runs they missed in 2023 and that's why you're seeing such exaggeration moves uh in this least in the first month and change of 2024 however you know uh the most basic thing happens is markets get tired and uh if you look at this past week just on the scoreboard uh all major benchmarks you know down about one percent or so some less, some a little more. The Nasdaq, uh, Nasdaq was down 1.3 percent, and this, you know, pretty much snapped the five-week uh, winning streak for the indexes. But again, if you traded indexes, again, means nothing. It's it's water cooler talk. It's it's um, you know, it's just the scoreboard people keeping tabs. The market was vicious, absolute vicious this week, um, and despite the Qs failing to reclaim back the five-day moving average. 
we saw some extraordinary moves. Uh, yeah, you know, let's just go one by one. Um, let's start off with SMCI. This was definitely, you know, the most majestic move probably I've seen in a real company in a long time. Again, you could you could turn around and say, well, Tesla had this magnificent move in 1920. It did absolutely did. Uh, Nvidia is still in the middle of its mass majestic move. Uh, now, obviously, they report. Uh, in a couple of days, but this is, you know, this is one of those stocks that for the majority part of the move, um, I don't think, at least none of my buddies even looked at this thing because again, you, you turn around and say, well, why am I going to trade SMCI if I could trade in the same space in video, if I could trade in the same space uh, AMD, the liquidity is there. I could buy, you know, you know, and this is the rationale behind it is, you know, I could buy 10 times more liquidity on AMD that I can turn around and on a on SMCI because it trades a dollar dollar and a half sometimes two dollar spreads with 100 share lots and, it, and of course it's cool you know seeing the stock go up 50 60 points but if you have no size on 50 60 points well what the hell's the point right if a trader's you know if a trader's um, uh, methodology is I would rather make two points on Tesla than 20 points on SMCI you kind of understand where most traders are coming from but ne ne nevertheless I mean this was Pretty much one of the biggest moves I, I think I've seen. Uh, I, I've seen in my career in a real stock. Um, it went from what 250, uh, kind of had this "quote unquote" blow off top uh, around the thousand uh, seventy eight level, and an incredible reversal. But hey, listen, that's gravity. We, you, know, you knew it was coming eventually, right? It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't really a secret. The question is, you know, if you took advantage, you were fantastic, right? We had a 970, uh, 970 backside pivot on this thing that imploded. Again, congratulations for all you guys. Uh, who caught it. Again, this is not really my thing, and I've been saying this for weeks and weeks and weeks. Again, I'd rather trade NVIDIA. I, I do trade NVIDIA. I love NVIDIA. I'd rather trade AMD. I love trading AMD now. So this is really not my thing. I know a lot of people did really very, very well on this thing. Uh, and God bless, right? And that's the whole point of pivots. You know, pivots don't care, you know, who's in the trade or not. It's either going to go or it's not going to go. And this was a perfect scenario. Uh, just the stock just, just stopped, right? Just absolutely stopped, putting the blow off top, uh, it lost the previous day's range, right? Lost the previous day's range of 917. And once it lost the previous day's range of 917, it got to the five day. And, you know, next week, if it starts taking out, uh, if it starts taking out Friday's ranges, probably has another, you know, 30, 40 points in the, in the trade. Might have a day two uh, in this thing as well. But again, absolutely majestic run. Uh, Tesla, right? Uh, Tesla finally broke out, right? Finally broke out. The problem with Tesla is, uh, it broke out at the wrong day, right? It broke out the day that the market, uh, you know, kind of rested. But this was a great move. Uh, this was an absolute great move. I'm, I'm still holding a runner from a couple of days ago. Finally broke out above uh, this 196.50 level. Uh, traded as high as the 205s. Kicked out more stock uh, pre-market yesterday. Uh, you know, again, this is the highest close in this whole formation. Uh, you have uh, short-term call buying coming in for next week. A lot, a lot of it despite... Uh, despite the, the weakness in the market. Again, great, great move on Tesla on Thursday, consolidation inside day. On Friday, they were coming for uh, the, the, the February 23rd expiration, basically this, this week's uh, up and coming weeklies. They were coming for the 205s, the, 20, the 210s. So uh, let's see if, if Tesla could wake up on some of the money flow that's maybe taking out of uh, SMCI or some of these other names. Uh, could be kind of pulled into Tesla because if Tesla starts reclaiming back uh, Friday's pre-market highs. You can see the 60-minute view. If Tesla starts getting above this pre-market high on Friday, you know we could see a move in this in this whole fill of like this 210, 212 level. So hopefully, uh, it can get it's done. Uh, all eyes, obviously, if you trade technology, uh, all eyes on Nvidia. Uh, they're reporting on the 21st. I believe it's Wednesday. Um, you know. Price targets all over the place. It feels like every single day a new broker is coming out and giving them a more exaggerated price target. I mean, I saw a $1,200 price target. I saw a $1,500 price target this week. Uh, all eyes on NVIDIA. But before it gets there, right, before it announces earnings, I, I want to kind of give you guys a little bit of synopsis. The market is a very, it's a cap, it's, it's you ever hear the expression, um, copycat league right like in the nfl now everybody's pass happy it's very very rare that you see a run first team like everybody's pass happy so the market's kind of a copycat event as well so you know the thought like as i already spoke to my i spoke to one of my buddies last night 
And he's like, well, yeah, everybody knows nothing's going to happen to NVIDIA prior to its earnings release Wednesday night. But what happens if it doesn't, right? What happens, and I tweeted this out on Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, but what happens if the market decides to do a juki pookie and pull a SMCI right before earnings? It's very possible, right? If you see here the last three days that it held the bottom of the range literally at the same price. Now, what happens on Tuesday, right? Because Wednesday the earnings are Wednesday night. So you have two full trading days. Now, what happens if this thing decides to pull a SMCI and loses the bottom of the range? Hey, maybe we could get a you know, $15, $20 move before earnings. Again, I'm not saying it will happen, but hey, like I say every single video, don't you need to be prepared? So uh, all eyes on NVIDIA for uh, for Wednesday night. We'll see. You know, We'll see what happens there if this is indeed uh, already priced into the move or does the market have uh, more room to go? Not all pretty, not all pretty in everywhere, okay? Um, Apple is very, very close to the bottom of the range. It's not a good thing. This thing starts getting below the bottom of the range. And now this is like day two now uh, below the 200-day SMA. Again, nothing happens good. You guys saw what happened with Tesla when it lost the 50 and the 200-day. Nothing good happens if this thing starts putting in a nice base here below the 200. This is a, definitely a name we want to watch if the market starts to pull uh, next week. And again, it's a very, very, you know, very big if it starts to pull. But again, the stock sitting below the 200-day moving average is not a good thing. Same thing with Microsoft. Guys, look how close this Microsoft is to really giving us an exaggerated swan dive, right? L look, at, look at this rolling. This is a rolling top. A high, a lower high, a lower high, a lower high. If Microsoft loses the 20-day support, folks, this, there's room. There's room all the way down to the 50-day moving average. You're talking about, what, 404 all the way down to 388, which is the 50-day? Right? Again, something to be prepared for. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, but something to be prepared for. Google, right? Another name, just like Apple, just like Microsoft. Google is sitting on its 50-day moving average, right? The last time it lost the 50-day moving average, it got down to its next rising support, right? Next rising support. So watch Google, same thing. If the market gets pulled next week, watch Google. If it starts losing the 50-day moving average, this thing can really, really get back to the bottom of the range here. Uh, look at Coin. Coin had an incredible run with Bitcoin, right? Incredible run with Bitcoin. It put an inverted hammer, right? It put an inverted hammer. Keep this in mind. In, 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 in two weeks, uh, the stock has gone from 114 to 200, okay? Can this be a same scenario as SMCI? Hey, why not, right? Why not? I, again, copycat league. If this thing starts losing the bottom of the range and, you know, there's another down day on SMCI, well, why can't coin come in 20, 30 points? For God's sake, the stock is up from 115 to, to almost 200. You tell me you can't give a retrace of 20 points, especially after it inverted hammer, right? Absolutely. Uh, again, keeping the theme of a potential, right, of a potential copycat theme. Look at ARM. ARM had an incredible, incredible run. Now it's sitting at a very tight channel. Again, you, we don't know which way it's going to break. But again, if we are trying to set up a narrative, and again, I'm not trying to convince anybody for anything, but if this does play out, and they start pulling the coins of the world, the videos of the world, right? Um, look at the bottom of the range of, of, of ARM, right? Two out of the last three days were red candles. It means the closes were lower than the open. So what happens if it loses the five day? What happens if it loses the bottom of the range? I mean, look how much room you have. You have 20 points back to the downside. So there's a lot of really, really good setups in case we uh, get pulled on the market. Uh, Meta I traded this week uh, was, was finally, remember we talked about for like two, three days, maybe finally breaks out. Finally broke out, right? Finally broke out. Gave us a phenomenal move on Thursday. Um, the problem was the market got soft. Uh, it picked a wrong time to break out. And now it's, you know, sitting the last couple of times on the 10-day. Now, what happens if the market gets pulled? What happens if, if Meta starts losing the 10-day? Doesn't mean, you know, doesn't mean uh, the stock has to go higher. Stocks do go down, you know. So we got to watch the 10-day. Last time it stopped at the 10-day was February the 13th and it bounced. Friday stopped at the 10 day, held you know held the, the 10 day. Well, now what happens if it loses the 10 day? That's exactly what I'm watching for the start of the week. And last but not least is Amazon, right? Amazon, uh, you know, never really gave that second day, second earnings run uh, after a pretty good quarter. And if you guys watch the news, Jeff Bezos has been selling a lot of stock, right? As that has something to do with the ability for for this thing not to get going, again, 
Very tight channel. Again, I don't know which way it's going to break. As you can see here, it's, it's got rejected three of the last four days on the five-day reclaim. It needs to reclaim the five-day moving average. If it doesn't, then we're talking about the bottom of the range of the 20-day support. So there's a lot of stuff going on, an amazing market. And the key to this fall is the Qs, right? Is the Qs. So the Qs have failed to reclaim the five-day moving average in the last three days in a row. And now we have to look at the bottom of the range here of the 20-day moving average, which is 425. Is 425 gets violated and especially close below 425 that means it will take out this whole rising support of the 20-day moving average that's held now for the last two months so if we start losing 425 and that's to be a big cog here uh then it's going to be a pretty good sell signal doesn't mean it's the end of the rally it just means it's a sell signal for the next uh couple of days so we're very very conscious of those levels so that's it guys that's it. it's pretty basic stuff here um, hopefully everybody is doing well. Hopefully everybody's happy and healthy and taking care of themselves and taking care of their loved ones. Again, there are no mulligans, guys. We only have one life to live. Again, if you are uh, interested in pivots, take advantage of the next couple of days through uh, President's Day weekend. And I look forward to working with you guys soon, right? No fluff, no editing, no nonsense, just straight up channels, straight up pivots. And the most important part is you're fully understanding of why. And that's the key to being a trader. Guys, God bless. Have a great weekend. And I will see you all on Tuesday. Take